all right good morning hello my people welcome to the score channel we got another live stream for you today i am taking a digital sat practice test from the satcrashcourse.com who has graciously been cool enough to like sponsor the channel and stuff so if you want to check that out you can go to the satcrashcourse.com there is a link below and you can actually take this test for free now if you're planning on taking this test for free for real you know spoiler alert okay because i'm gonna go do it uh you probably won't see the easy english model because you know i got that down but you will probably see the english uh, or the easy math module i'm gonna i'm gonna do math as well and you can laugh at my math um so just so you know if you're if you're planning on doing this yourself and you like really want to see it fresh and not like you know uh, with any spoilers, you might want to just go check that out first, and then you can come back here and watch this because it'll stay up on the channel. Uh, but what we're going to do is just get started with digital SAT practice test one. There's a link in the description of the video if you want to go get this test for yourself. You can just go to that link, create an account on the site, and then you can go into it. I actually published a short yesterday kind of explaining it, but you go into your account and you go to get new tests, and there's an option for you to add practice test one to your cart. And then when you got practice test one, you'll be able to like, just go ahead and do it. Like I'm about to do right now. You don't need to put any credit card information. You don't need to like do anything else other than just create an account, add that test to your cart and go ahead and get it done. And I want to give a shout out too to the guys from SAT crash course, because we talked about doing this before and they delivered and they heard you guys and they said, okay, we're going to make this test for free to help you out a little bit. So, so yeah. And uh, as far as tips go, I'll be talking about my approach. You're going to see me do this test for real. Okay. So I got coffee. I got caffeine in the bloodstream. I got up nice and early. So I would be well awake by the time we do this. Cause that's important. One quick tip before we start this thing for test day, make sure you get a good night's sleep. Make sure you wake up early so that you can get your body going. It takes your body a little while to get going and you don't want to just like wake up and run to the test center. You got to be fresh. You got to be energized. And, and depending on how you handle caffeine, you may want to take some, I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice, but I can't function in the morning without like three cups of coffee just to start the day. So if I'm going to take a test, you better believe I'm going to pound some caffeine before I go ahead and take that test. Okay. This right here, this is like 50 points for me at least. Okay. Maybe more. So yeah. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. I can't wait. Okay. All right. And as you can see, again, this is all very much the same. I'm going to embiggen this. Remember you can do this control and mouse wheel. If you want to do this. All right. Logical word or phrase. That's usually how we start. All right. So, okay. Brief history time. Big blind back holes. Complex. Clear use. Okay. So despite, so it's like, it's making it easier it's it's sort of i'm guessing popularized because because it's a bestseller yep okay all right same deal here okay i understand revolutionized groundbreaking theory of relativity space time intertwined has blanked our perspective okay so this is groundbreaking so i'm probably looking for something along those lines i would say hmm this is a little tricky because all right unraveled our perspective i mean it kind of has but it also i mean has it i wouldn't say escalated um, but I think it might be more like forged here cause it's creating that perspective cause it's like a new perspective, right? So I think that's what I would go with here. We'll see if that works out. Um, okay. Amazon rainforest, extensive deforestation, new agriculture, but, but all right, obviously that's bad. Deforestation is bad. Jeopardized is bad. Uh, that's yeah, that's the answer. That's gotta be it. Okay. Arts flourished with a renewed interest. All right. Prominent artist, Michelangelo. This dude's works, Statue David. Okay, so something the ideals, and we're talking about like, all right, aesthetics. Uh, I guess, I mean, this all seems positive, I, I think. So I would just go for something positive. I don't think it's going to be negated, overshadowed, or dissolved. Those are all negative words. So I'll just go with cap encapsulated here. I think this is like the way to go. Um, for those asking about answers to material and drive, they're in the PDFs, people. For like the 400th time, you got to download the PDF, open the PDF, you can click on the link, the little button to like get the answers for the stuff. I don't have them anywhere else. Uh, colossal usually means huge, but let's take a look. Um, okay. On weekends, the Rolls Royce became an omnibus bearing parties to and from the city between the colossal unrest. Yeah, it's got to be like enormous, right? That's just okay. 
I just want to double check these because even though I know what this word means and I know that this is probably the answer, I should still always look at the context here just to make sure I'm on the right side of things. So that looks good. Okay, poetry. All right, overall structure. Um, okay, birches are trees. That's a kind of tree. So when I see them bend, okay. Same point swinging them, but swinging doesn't bend them down. That's ice storms do. I've seen that, yeah. Okay, uh-huh. All right, so this is just describing, like the overall structure here is just like comparing kind of two different situations, like where trees are swinging, but then when they swing in an ice storm, I've seen this, by the way, I've seen the tops of trees touch the ground. Um, I think that this is a possible answer here. I'm gonna turn on my eliminator mode. It's definitely not this. Um, it's not, <sighs> It's not the beauty of a winter morning, though, I don't think. And then the destructive effect. And it's not really destructive. It's just talking about, like, how that looks. Um, this could be an answer, too. I'm kind of stuck between these two. I might come back on this. But it's not a memory. But it, it's not a memory. It's not a memory because he says, I think some boys. Been... Like, he's just imagining that. So I'm going to go with D. All right. Um, I, may, I may just flag that to come back. It's not a bad idea. All right, what's true about this? And remember, I'm also keeping track of my time. I got 28 minutes left still. I'm on question seven. I'm doing good. I want to use one minute per question at most. And so I'm gaining time right now that I can spend when I need it. So if I need to slow down for a minute, I can do that. Okay. What's true about Tess? All right. So Tess is a young woman from a poor family and had an encounter with Alec that leads to her downfall. The beautiful feminine tissue, sensitive. Okay. Well, this should have been traced such a coarse pattern doomed to receive okay so something bad happens to her here why so often the, all right that's just more of an yeah the wrong man the woman okay so all right so basically this beautiful sensitive person has had like a really bad experience um so this seems right innocent exposed to harsh circumstances i see the innocence with the blank as snow comment there so that seems like the right thing and it doesn't seem like it's deliberate choices because it's it just seems like it happens. They're not necessarily blaming her for those decisions. So we're gonna go with C. What's true about Catch-22? Um, okay, this, I've read this book once. Uh, okay, specify the concern for one's safety was real and rational, right? Or was crazy and could be grounded. All he had to do was ask, okay. So I get like the Catch-22 is sort of a paradox situation. Like you can't get out of it. Um, so paradox is B, I, I would say that's probably the right answer. If you know anything about this term and this book, you probably could answer this without reading. Um, but basically that's the point of saying like, if you're, if you're not crazy, right, you would be worried about your own safety. And so you're not crazy. You can get in the plane and fly in the air force. You can go to war, but if you are crazy, then you don't know about your own safety, you don't care. And that also makes you good for war because you'll just go out there. So essentially the, you know, it says as soon as he asked to be grounded, he would no longer be crazy and would have to fly more. So like your catch 22 is that paradox. You cannot get away from the danger. If you're rational, hey, good, you're not crazy. If you are crazy, hey, guess what? You're, you're gonna be like, fine, you'll, you don't care. So. Yeah, it's got to be B. Um, all right. If you don't know the meaning of words, try to try to see how important that word is. Like real quick, I can go back for this. Um, birches. If I don't know what birches are, I can probably work without it. It doesn't really matter. What what I focus on more are verbs. Like I see it's something bending left to right, and then it says straighter, darker trees. So like. Okay, we're comparing trees. So these must be trees, must be a specific type of tree. Even if I've never seen this word before, I could figure that out. So that's something you wanna do. Um, Jane Goodall, okay. Chimpanzees, natural habitat, valuable insights. Traveled to Tanzania, good for her, took notes. Okay, transformer understanding primate behavior, confirming her initial hypothesis of this natural habitat, valuable insights. Okay, so. The main idea is that she wanted to like apply a different approach is what I understand here. Um, desire to explore new territories. I'm not sure about that. Focus on the communication patterns. I mean, this is true, right? 
Um, this one's a little tricky. I don't think that this is true because she doesn't talk about other, there's nothing about other regions in here. Study of chimpanzees has expanded our knowledge. I mean, this is true too, but it doesn't really talk about evolution and human behavior. I mean, that, that might be facts, but that's not in the text. Um, focus on the communication patterns. So I think that's true, but that's only here. And I feel like it also is social interactions and the main ideas are going to be here and here. Like, I mean, at the same time, this is in that first sentence. Maybe I shouldn't mark B off. Ooh, this one's trickier. Okay. This is a good question. Actually, I'm going to say this isn't the main idea. I think it's and, and a new territory to me seems vague. I'm actually thinking B might be the right answer here going back because this is in the first sentence. Like anytime I need main idea, I got to look at that first part and last part. So the first part does talk about why she did this. And it's like, we're trying to learn about human behavior and evolution. And then we get to this last line of confirming her hypothesis. So it actually might be this right here. I'm going to, I'm going to mark this and see if I get this right. Um, okay. Grapes of wrath. Uh, this one. Oh, I hate these. Okay. Uh, force up their land during the great depression search of a better life. Okay. So I just need to get something here that kind of shows like what they, all right. Land is so much more. No, uh, this is also too short. There's just stuff people do. Like I need something that evidences people's movement to another place or the fact that they're forced off their land or need a better life or born on the land, got killed on it, dying on it, makes us ours, born on it. Work. Okay. Um, that's just talking about their attachment to their land, but not really being forced off it or needing a better life. This has to be it, right? I mean, we're talking about like starvation and hunger. That would justify why that that goes in that direction. I think that's good. Um, okay, logically completes the text. Uh, despite his fame, there's been a persistent debate about the identity of the woman. This enduring controversy suggests that. Okay, so we may never know the identity. That makes sense. It's gotta be one of these. This is too radical. It's got to be one of these things right here. Either keep the woman's identity a secret or the true identity may never be known. Is there anything that supports the secret? If I go back, I don't see anything there about what Leonardo da Vinci was saying. So I'm going to say it's D. Um, okay. Critics argue that by becoming more mainstream, pop art lost its initial subversive power. If these critics are right, it could imply that. This actually seems like the right answer right away. Notice that for these sentence completion ones, I typically go to the end here and just focus on this and then maybe go back to confirm. Like critics argue that becoming part of the mainstream means it lost its initial subversive power. So this is basically saying the same thing. So this seems like a good idea. I could quickly take a look at the first sentence to see if any of these other answers make any sense. Um, I don't think mainstream is resistant to the radical ideas necessarily. And I don't think it's necessarily no longer relevant. I think that's too much also. And this is a generalization, but like, again, there's nothing about other, other things. So we'll go with A. All right. How do I read so fast guys? Number one piece of advice, read, okay? Practice reading. And notice when I read some of these paragraphs, I'll go back to the Jane Goodall. This is a perfect example. Think about if you actually go back to this in this video and listen to what I said. I said, Jane Goodall, cool. Uh, study in chimpanzees, natural habitat, valuable insights. I'm not reading word for word. I'm looking for keywords and just picking them up and connecting them. If you tell me studying chimpanzees, natural habitat, valuable insights, I, I can naturally assume the relationship between those words just with basic like logic. Okay. So I'm not gonna, I don't like, I don't need to read each word one at a time. I'm just picking up the ideas. So right away I know, okay, she's talking about studying chimpanzees, natural habitat, valuable insights, human behavior, like it, full sentence. She believes that if we study chimpanzees within their natural habitat, we could be able to get valuable insights into aspects of human behavior. There's extra words in the middle that I don't need to process because they're not really adding anything. So I'm always looking for like key nouns, important adjectives, verbs, 
focus on like the key words and that helps you go faster. That's, that's key for skimming the text. And then the other thing is knowing where to read. You don't have to read everything. Most logically completes. I'm going to start in this case, this one's short. I might just go the whole thing. So, okay. So, all right. So this thing, whatever that is, small flowering plant, really, whatever, use the form of the immune system. Okay. To remember pests like humans. All right, cool. So if this is true, then it would suggest that Plants have some form of memory related to pest exposure. Cause like, yeah, there must be some kind of memory if it can remember pests. And I, again, I don't think I would apply this to all the other things here, like other plants or other species. Like it doesn't make sense. This is just focused on one. So we're just going to say this. And I think that's good. All right. Conventions is standard English. These are going to be fast. I like this. Uh, where is this question from? Dark comet, the S A T crash course.com. You can take this test for free. These are 100% unique questions. And I've been helping these guys to improve them and make them better. So uh, by all means, check it out. Yeah. All right. Um, more coffee. Uh, I'll probably at the break for math, go grab some more. All right. So convention standard English. All right. So they designed some smaller blanks and rigged them with a, all right. They designed some smaller symbols, paired the downsized symbols and rigged them. All right. Okay, I think this is probably going to be double commas. Let's see. For example, they designed some smaller symbols, paired the downsized symbols, and rigged them with... A, yeah, it's got to be this. It's just it's just listing things they did. Okay, so it's B. Um, conventions of standard English. Okay. Underwater recording devices analyzing the whale's vocalations. Okay, let's see here. All right, so recording devices and analyzing whale's vocalizations. So what would I do with that? Uh... Could be migratory patterns, maybe. Um, impact of environmental changes on humpback whale. All right, that, that doesn't really make sense. Environment, it's not studying the environment. It's, it's, it's studying them. Um, I would say like closely monitored and studied is true, but I feel like that's not quite specific enough. I'm not sure. Uh, like I don't see anything here that would indicate migratory patterns. I mean, it could. But like I'm looking at specifically what we're doing here, recording devices and vocalizations, like that's communication stuff. I would say that's probably more what I'm looking for here. This is a little generic. This is specific communication matches with vocalizations and recording devices. So I think we're going to go with that. All right. Um, when zoologists, okay, so I see a when. So I know automatically we have like probably a comma in here. Um, it's got to be this, I think, when the Zavala compared the genome of the savannah elephant to the genome of the forest elephant, comma, they found almost as many differences. Yeah, I think that would be per the best here. I, I wouldn't do no punctuation here because but that's this is like a dependent clause at the beginning, and I want to just give that pause. Um, okay. And it's, it's not C on this one, if you guys are looking at this one. I don't know. Somebody's put a C in the chat. It's because this is not an independent clause. So I can't use the semicolon. Um, okay. A division of labor and resources that is cost effective. Yep, because it's a division. Done. All right. For people in the Northeast United States, the little regions of the Eastern blank, something is a blank. Okay, so this is going to be a comma. Because again, the four is kind of setting up a dependent clause. So I'm going to need a comma after Canada. So that eliminates these two. Um, so the nighttime sound of these frogs. Okay, so I don't want a comma before my verb in this case. This verb needs to be attached to its subject, which is the sound of these frogs. So B would be correct. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, Anish. Uh, you said 15 with C. C, okay, you're thinking migratory patterns? I don't know. I, I, I kind of read this as vocalizations being communication patterns. So that's why I'm leaning towards that answer. Uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, I know there's a bit of a delay sometimes on the stream. So if you're see, sending me something in chat, I can go back. I'm going fast enough to give me time for me to fix things and go back. Okay, more, more standard English. Uh, roll of microorganisms and spread of diseases. Okay, so this is just one of those cases where we're looking for like the most effective way to say things. Um, let's see here. So development of germ theory, Louis Pasteur, like Pasteur helped infect it to these become better controlled. I like that answer. The understanding was revolutionized. That's true. But I feel like we would want to go back to Pasteur here. 
Meh. A lot of these are, are accurate, but I just don't like they. We need to have coherency and consistency here. Prevention of epidemics became more effective. Like that could be true, but again, all I got here is the theory and like the experiments and observations and the role. Okay, so we got the role in the spread of diseases. So I feel like diseases here. Pasteur coming back to this is still the best answer. I would rather use this active voice probably that versus the passive here. Although I could. This one, I, I'm not sure I have a great best answer. This is a tricky one. Um, all right, I'm going to go with B. I could be wrong. But I like the idea of putting the name in there. All right, Ribner was impressed with the product and thought it had potential. The two women decided to become... Okay, all right. So here we've got a few different ways to link up these sentences. Deciding doesn't work. That's wrong because the, this would be a whole sentence and that would not be a complete sentence with an ing. Uh, potential, the two, this is a comma splice. This would be two sentences combined with a comma. That's wrong. Potential semicolon with the two women deciding, not with a semicolon. If that was a comma, that would be okay. Potential comma and the two, this is the best answer. There you go. Had to go through them all. All right, logical transition, okay. Uh, somebody mu musical, whatever. All right, good. He did a bunch of stuff. Uh, backdrop of films, saturated, saturated, so many movies said it should be banned. Okay. So, um, I think this is an, in fact, because it says dozens of films and then it's saturated so many movies. Like, I think the point here is like, it's, it's, but then again, there's a part of me that thinks it could be an even so because it's like. Could it be kind of negative depending on how I think it's in fact, because we're, we're, we're giving a fact about that, that to kind of like contextualize this. I think this is the best choice. Um, all right. And yeah, if you got a question on why not one, just leave, leave the exact, not, like tell me which question it was just so I can make sure I can go back and review it with you. I will go back and do some review on this. Um, all right. Logical transition, Adagio and G minor, composition of this guy. Shortly after, many scholars questioned its authenticity. Okay. This dude had long maintained that it was an inspired tribute. Ah, okay. This is like a contrasting one. I need like an although kind of thing here. All right. So while, while he had long maintained it was a tribute, he finally admitted that. It, yeah. Okay. That's correct. Um, logical transition. Limited people's understanding of the cosmos led to a variety of mythologies. Okay. Now we have, all right, I need to go back a little bit more. What limited the people's understanding? The, okay, observing the night sky only with your naked eyes. So yeah, now we're contrasting that with telescopes. So I need a contrast um, in comparison, maybe. Um, could be good. At the same time, I think there's something here that's important, which is ancient times. And that makes me think maybe nowadays is a better choice because I'm contrasting the past and the present and how that affected like people's understanding of things. So, and, and I, I feel like if, if this said like modern telescopes, I would go with B because then it's like the time component is there. But I feel like I need that time component. So I'm going to go with D. Um, why that site is going to sell tests for you? Uh, you can get one for free right here. But yeah, they, they need to make money. They, they work hard on this stuff. And they've been doing a lot. So, you know, if you want to buy a test, that's how things work. Um, okay, we're getting down to the note-taking questions. All right. Highlight the lasting scientific contributions of the telescope. Okay, so... This is at, this is lasting contributions even after 2018 continues to be analyzed during its life. Um, I don't know if I like that cause it's lasting. I I'm not sure. All right. This is one, dis this is one discovery. That's not quite enough information, I think. And this is just what it did at the beginning. So it's one of these two for sure. Now let's just take a quick look at these notes. Um, all right. So all these exoplanets, this, this is an important thing. And then its data continues to be analyzed and has additional discoveries. So this one just seems to focus a little bit more on this one. And this one is a little bit more on this one. And just because it's lasting contributions, I'm leaning towards this first one because this is looking at what happens after 
not during necessarily and lasting contributions. I mean, these are ongoing. So I think that's the closest to lasting. So again, keywords in this text are important to analyze. Um, okay. Still wants to emphasize the role of Finlandia in promoting Finnish nationalism. So it's an unofficial national anthem symbolizing national. This seems like a good answer. Despite Russian oppression, it's a covert protest. Um, it's the role of promoting. So this was promoting some nationalism. Um, it was composed during the time of Russian rule. I don't know if that that's more context, not so much. This is also good, like kind of. Mm. I like the fact that it was a protest because it's like the role of it, right? Like this was a role it, it had. It was a protest anthem and now it's sort of a symbol of it. Um, unofficial national anthem. I don't know if that adds as much to it. So I, I like B. Uh, functional significance of the narwhal's tusk. What does the narwhal's tusk do? Uh, it's a distinguishing feature with a sensory function. That seems too vague. Can detect change the water to Okay, that's that's good. It helps it find food and navigate. That's also good. It's not this. Okay, hang on. So detect changes in water condition. I mean, that is its functional thing, but then the significance is also like what else it does. How does it say anything here? All right, let's look at the notes. Uh sensory purpose, collecting information detect changes in water temperature. So there's other things too. I mean, water conditions, but that is to me like, all right, that's like the sensory detail, but then the functional significance is probably more like this, like the actual function, the, the purpose of those things. These are the mechanisms or like the sensory capabilities. This is more of the function of those. So I think that this might be better. These note taking questions drive me crazy sometimes. Um, nevertheless, you use it the same way as however, Ninja. Same way as however. It's just like a fancy way to say but. Um, okay. Advantage of online exploration of Baroque music. Interesting. Okay. Uh, featured a timeline with influential... I mean, that's... But that doesn't really tell me the advantage. Uh, selecting a composer piece of music led users to audio sample. I mean, that seems convenient. But again, I don't know if I see an advantage. The online exploration of the Baroque period appealed to users because it gave them control over the learning experiences. That seems good. That seems like an advantage. It appealed to users. Like, I'm going to go with that one. All right, that's first module. Let's go. Okay. Um, I said I wanted to review six for a second. Oh, yeah, that was about the trees. Yeah, I, th I think that this is accurate like he's looking at the human activities on nature which is some boys swinging on them but it doesn't do the same thing as something like ice storms but then the resilience aspect of it you know um i think like it doesn't talk about them being destroyed or anything i think there's some resilience in there was there anything else i want to look at here Alter it's not alternative explanations for the same phenomena it's not a memory this is true, but again, it's not destructive. It's not like destroying the trees. It's 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 describing their like the way they look, and I don't think that I don't think the first one is either a, the beauty of a winter morning. I don't have proof that this is like a winter morning necessarily. I don't even see morning stuff in here, so I got to go with the all right. Remember, you can hit this button down here and always go back to the review page and like, that's usually the most efficient way to, you know, go. Um, okay, so let's see. There are words you've never seen before learning vocab. Um, look, there's gonna be some words you don't know sometimes. And, and sometimes you have to use the context. One of the things I try to look for is like, are there any similarities with the words? Because I had a couple of cases like, uh, I think it was this one, like this one here, I mean, negated, overshadowed, dissolved. I know those are kind of negative. They, they're they not positive words. And so the fact that there's three of those can kind of give me a clue that I probably want to go for C. We'll find out if that's actually true when I get done with this. So <laughs> um, I could be talking out my ass right now. Uh, but let's find out. Let's go to the second module. Let's see what we got here. Let's see how it steps up the difficulty and then we'll get to it. Um, okay, logical word or phrase. 
Dynamics of power and privilege in society often reveals a blank relationship between wealth and access to resources, exacerbating social inequities. Okay, so it, there's got to be a like a tenuous, I don't think it's tortuous or oblique, reciprocal relationship between, is it reciprocal? Like if I have money, yeah, I have access to more research. I mean, it's correlated, like it's not, I don't know if it's reciprocal. Maybe it is. I mean, it's kind of tenuous. I think the fact that it's as exacerbating inequities makes me think tenuous because it's like suggesting here that maybe this is a problem. So I'm going to go with B. Uh, logical word of phrase. Okay. Persistent memory of internet as a blank commentary on these are surrealist. So I would say maybe enigmatic because that's weird. Enigmatic is something that's kind of strange, kind of out there. Like surreal is out there, kind of strange. Um, I don't think it's anachronistic. Peremptory. I'm not sure what that means 100%. I, I kind of know that word, but I don't know that word. Again, I'm going to I'm gonna try to use other clues in the paragraph. If I got surrealist, like I can kind of understand that that's going to be something like this, you know, probably. So we'll go with that. Um, logical word of phrase. Advent of the internet has made, I would say, probably a profound impact. Um, now, again, this is one of those where I don't have a lot of information in the paragraph here. This is really short. But, like, again, what can I do? I could look at, okay, immaterial means it's not existent. We wouldn't write that, I don't think, and it wouldn't be make any common sense. Questionable, I mean, if I had more context to choose something, maybe about the morality of our communication, rage bait, toxicity, that's different elusive impact now i think it's pretty it's definitely not elusive i mean i think we would need more information so in the absence of information i think we would start here um use of iconography in byzantine art served to preserve sort of the i mean enliven that seems good make it live again look at the parts of words like if i see the word live in here okay i know it's like has to do with life and then enliven would be like to make something lively or more alive. And so like iconography in art would do that for the narratives. Like I want to depict or show that art. So that seems good. Uh, growth of technology in 21st century leading to a shift. Okay. It's dramatically reshaped. So it's gotta be a big shift or some sort of significant shift. Tectonic shift could be good. That's a good word. We, we use that term for like earthquakes and sometimes we apply it to other things. Let's go. Uh, best purpose of the text. Okay. It's stifling in here. I long for fresh air and freedom. America. More than just a doll in this house with no thoughts or desires of my own. Okay. So clearly she's not satisfied with her situation. Dissatisfaction with her limited role in her environment. This seems pretty good. I don't see... Mm, this last one though is kind of weird too. I'm going to cross out these guys because it's not those guys. To highlight their yearning for independence and personal achievement. I mean, she does say freedom and desires of her own. And I don't know, like environments broad. I'm not sure. I mean, both of these feel pretty good. I may come back for this one. Let's see. Number six messing with me. Um, yeah. Uh, do I think these are a little harder than digital SAT? I think they are a little bit. Um, and the guys at SAT Crash Course told me that that was the feedback they've got. I would rather it be a little harder than too easy, personally. I think that's good for you. Um, if I had to choose to go harder or softer, I'd probably go harder. Mind you, I'm right now in a hard module, so it should be harder. And I am <laughs> having to think more. So uh, function of the underlying sentence. Let's take a look here. Drone of voice of a degree, beer, and delight glyph. All right, so there's a lot of visuals here. We have audio, video and some like other descriptions. So there's shouts, voices, footsteps, greetings, light and glitter of flames. Um, underscores the intensity. There's definitely that. There seems like a lot of intensity here. Uh, revulsion, no, I don't see his, like he's not revulsed at this. Uh, disorientation and confusion I think is almost better. Like, cause it's not just about the fires. There's shouts and, and voices and stuff it's it there's other things going on it's it's like there's chaos this seems like a good answer uh okay there's a timeless quality to the scene a strange mixture of joy and sadness that made holden's heart ache okay um 
so it it's giving us some sort of image. I don't think it, I don't think it's about Allie because let's go back a little bit though before I say that. Allie, his younger brother, ran across the field. Okay, so it's just we got the scene here, so that was already taken care of, and I don't see a description of the field. I see perhaps a deep emotional connection because it makes his heart ache. That could be good. A secret that he's keeping. No. See. All right. How would Baron Miller like respond to conventional wisdom? Okay. So I'm going to start with text one because I want to know what they would respond to. But I want to start with text one here. All right. So these guys are saying that there's a lot of different species of plankton. One dominant species should outcompete others and give you a monoculture. But they can't explain it. Okay. So... These guys say a small size, dense nature of water creates physical. Okay. So they're saying that competition is less prevalent. So basically this idea of monoculture depends on the idea that these species would compete and therefore be in the same place. And these guys are saying they can't be in the same place because of the density of water. So they would tell them to look at that. Um, diverse ecological world, but not, not different species. So I don't think it's replenishment of nutrients. I didn't see anything about nutrients. Uh, their own finding presumably. No, our conventional view fails to come for the, yeah, this is it. This is it right here. Definitely. Okay. Data from the table. Uh, okay. We've got chips from silicon and germanium. Let me take a look down here. Okay. So the historian suggests that chips, albeit more complex in their production, are likely to have superior efficiency, and reliability. Pause it that. Okay. So silicon chips, like, were better at some point, even though it was harder to make them. So there's got to be something here from this chart that sort of explains maybe why they were getting produced more at some point or something. Let's see. All right. Each depth below the surface difference in the number of chips suggests that silicon was more challenging to utilize. Um, I don't think that's true. I mean, that's not really the point either. What, what, what would they be positing? So it's not that. Uh, highest number of uh, uh, surge of production during that period. I don't think that's it either. Each depth below the surface. Favor due to the superior. The difference in the number of chips, silicon. Yeah, like this could be good because look, each the silicon chips, even though these are supposed to be harder to make, there's more of them all the time. So clearly the germanium ones suck. And so I'm looking at also like, I'm seeing an advantage here. So yeah, I think, I think this is probably the right thing. Let, I'm going to take another a little deeper look at this paragraph though. I want to understand a little bit more what they were trying to study. Uh, they, they said delved into the development and usage of chips and they saw in this dump site, different periods of manufacturing. Yeah. So, okay. So they probably saw, more recently, it looks like depth below surface, like that would be more recent garbage has a higher number of these chips. But historically speaking, these have always been the ones. And so I would say this has to be it. Like these ones were just, they had to, they were just good. That's a tricky one. Um, are we doing math? Yeah, you're going to watch me struggle at math. It'll be fun. Um, all right. Schmidt's study support her claim. What's her claim? Suggest that exposure to bioneered environments could increase empathy for endangered species. Cool. Okay, so she put people in an em environment of a rainforest or a park and then asked them about how they felt. All right, so the ones that would be in the rainforest should support species, endangered species more because we want to support her claim. So urban park, more fresh, doesn't matter. Uh, by engineer rainforest more likely expressed uh, could be good, but it's not about the species. Part time in, in, in a binary range of first, significantly more positive. Yes, this is the answer. This is the answer. Happy, go. Okay. Uh, rebut the viewpoint held by supporters of the classic theory in sports psychology. Okay, I need to figure out what the <laughs> classic theory is. Classic theory is that practicing yoga does not improve an athlete's performance. Okay, so I want to rebut that. And then I'm looking for something that says yoga does help athletes. So this played significantly. Improved. This seems pretty good. This seems like the right answer to me. I'll take a quick look at the others. Did not integrate 
No, that would be the exact opposite. Sports performance was strongly linked. That doesn't, that means it didn't matter. Four months into the study, decline. No, that's the opposite. Okay, A was good. All right, Chu. What's up, Chu? Chu and colleagues' conclusion. What's their conclusion? Uh, compression ratio of an engine. Okay, that's important. Uh, these guys said they developed a new engine design, engine A. Okay, so they got a new design. And then they found, they said results are promising. Cool. Okay, so let's look at engine A. All right, so comparison of compression ratio. So it has higher compression ratios, which are supposed to be good in both columns. So let's see. So we wanna, we wanna show that their design is better. Uh, this, I don't know if this, all right, hang on. A and B have a seven at the low. That doesn't explain why one's better. Uh, A's lowest is higher than the highest of B. These look like they are exactly the same. So I don't think I can necessarily say that, but if the other answers are wrong, I might. It could be like a tiny amount that maybe I can't appreciate on the graph. Sometimes they do that on the real SAT. So just keep that in mind. Like if it looks like it's equal, it probably is, but it might not be. Uh, B's highest is 8.5 while A's is 10. Yeah, yeah, that, that checks out. That is, that's definitely easy to support. Notice that it even says around 10 when the line is right there. That's another clue that it could be like 9.9 .9 and we don't know. Um, this only talks about A. So it, it has to be one of these because they compare. I don't have hard evidence for B based on what I see in the chart, but C definitely. So we're going with that. Macbeth, okay. In a moment of despair, Macbeth expresses his remorse when he says, this, this has to be it. Will, will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from it? Like, yeah, he's got blood on his hands. He's literally sitting there saying like, oh man, I don't know if this is gonna, if I can ever get past this. Like, can I ever be clean again? Like he's definitely got remorse. I think C's gotta be the answer. Um, okay, data from table. All right, uh, let's see. We want to complete the statement. What's the statement? All right, botanist, let's see. So the average leaf count was measured, the astonishing finding. So I need to figure out something about the leaf count here. Let's, I like to work backwards on these. Okay, so leaf count acidity. So we're correlating these two things. Soil acidity can affect the leaf count and acidophilic plants love that. They're good about that. Okay, they got a, a you know fetish for acid. Um, so a botanist decided to experiment. All right, cool. So basically what I'm looking at are, we're trying to say that the ones that are acidophilic would be happier in the acidic soil and therefore they would have more leaves. So which ones, okay, maple didn't benefit at all. It was like the same crap. And then these two did see significant increases. Okay, so blueberries and rhododendrons being acidophilic had significantly more leaves. Yeah, this this seems to be correct. I don't know that this is astonishing though. This this word gives me a little bit of doubt. Um, it wouldn't be this though. And I don't think it's just about blueberries. I mean, this is true, but it's still a pretty fat difference. Now nah, we're gonna go with A, okay. Um, yeah, I'm taking a look at, I'm going to take a look at your questions when we get to break, by the way. Um, so just give me, or when I get done with this module, I, I see there's a lot in the chat. I will get to you in a minute. I'm in the zone right now. What's true about Raskolnikov? Uh, he's probably Russian. All right. He's a poor student in St. Petersburg who commits a crime. All right. So he says, bowed down to all the suffering of humanity, reached the end of his tether, could not endure torture, had to get out of this room, out of this house. Oh, this horse, like, okay, so he needed to get the hell out of there. And and he was done. He was at the end of his rope. Like, he can't handle it anymore. So he does something that he, all right, let's see. Um, desperation has reached an unbearable state. That checks out based on what I see here. Um, commit another crime regardless of consequence. I, I don't see, I mean, this is, there is no matter the consequences, but I don't see anything about another crime here. No. Yeah, it's got to be B. Simple answer is probably best here. Um, sunlight sensitive. Okay. All right. Hang on. Logically completes the text. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at this last sentence. A comparison of unmodified plants with the older one showed no difference in fruit ripening under normal sunlight conditions, but under high conditions explained accelerated fruit ripening. Okay. So the alteration did not make it ripen. 
like, all right, now there's POI. All right, so I got to go back and read a little bit. All right, let's, I'm going to have to read more because I'm looking at these answers. I don't know what the hell PHYB is. I got to go back. So I wasn't able to cheat this one. This is, this is a good hard module question. It's making me read the whole paragraph. Uh, okay, so they're looking at the mechanism for this thing to accelerate fruit ripening if there's more sunlight. So if, if there's more light, this plant will ripen faster, be, but we want to know why. We want to know what the mechanism is. And so they looked at this protein and they replaced it with potato protein and to see if that would break this mechanism. And it, it did. So it said the unmodified plants were better. So that means that this protein is responsible for this mechanism. So PHYB enables them to respond. Yes, because when they removed that PHYB, it did not respond. So that is the correct answer. Okay. That one's tricky, man. Um, what did I score in all my recent blue book tests? Uh, on English, I was usually getting 770 or 800. Like if I missed one, I would get 770 usually. I, I got a 780 on one because I missed, I think, a question on the second hard module or something. I think it counted less. Um, but I was, I'm usually getting 770 or 800 if I'm doing it right. Uh, and then math, don't, you don't want to know. Okay. So convention standard English, my favorite part. Let's go. All right. The blank offered no definitive recommendations. All right. The scientists involved in this recent study offered, no, we don't need any punctuation here. There's no reason to, cause I have a verb here. I don't want a comma before my verb. And the same rule kind of applies here with scientists involved. Like I don't need to separate this. Uh, the majority of workers are tired. The effects are readily something not a, okay. Apparent. Um, all right. So I, I don't think I would do comma cause that's a comma splice. That would be joining two independent clauses. So this is wrong. Uh, colon seems good here. Readily apparent. What are the effects? Colon will tell me loss of sleep, not only lower productivity to injuries. That seems good. I do not need a comma after loss of sleep. So we're going to go with B for sure. Um, okay. Take Bartlett blank unless they're treated with. All right. So take Bartlett pairs for instance, commas are all around. Uh, yeah. Usually we use commas around for instance here. So I think that would be the best choice. Okay. Using the principles in Heron's plant breeder, crossbred various plant species to create thousands of new varieties. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Proponents of organic food, of course, are quick to add their numerous other reasons to buy organic food, such as. Okay. Um, usually, I would probably have no comma after such as. So this is probably the best choice. It's not going to be C or A because of that. And I don't really want to use a colon after a connector like such as. Generally, we wouldn't do that. Because um, the, the such as almost functions like that colon in a way. So I don't think I would need to do that. I'm going to go with D. All uh, right. Logical transition. Overcame with hunger. Stopped in an orchard. Ate some apples. Took a nap. <laughs> Still managed to finish in fourth place. <laughs> All right, now, somehow, right? Somehow, yeah, he still managed to finish in fourth place. I like this I like this option here because, yeah, if you did all this and finish in fourth place, that's kind of a, I'm, I'm not sure how. So, yeah, somehow. All right, no taking. Importance and vulnerability of the Great Barrier Reef. All right, importance, yeah, but I don't see vulnerability. Uh... This is both, uh, kind of. I don't know how much that's importance. It just sort of says where it is. This is better because we've got like endangered species. Yeah, this is better. Quantum computing characteristics and potential in a balanced and pragmatic manner. Okay, well, fancy. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Balanced and pragmatic characteristics and potential. So... Using qubits, that is some characteristics. Principles, quantum mechanics, challenge. Um, I don't know. I'm not sold. Quantum computing uses quantum mechanics principles and has potential. Okay, this is this is true. This is not bad. 
Quantum computing powered by Cubist computers might transform several scientific fields. Fair, it might, because that, that does seem a little bit balanced. We're not necessarily saying it's going to change the world. Vast potential, but the practical construction is... This one's tricky. So, summarizing it, I'm not going to get too specific. I feel like maybe I don't need the qubits thing because that's not very pragmatic and it's not quite a summarizing thing. So, this one using... I mean, quantum mechanics principle is a little bit redundant. I feel like this is a better answer. Like, this tells me exactly what they can do that's important, which is, like, I think an important summary of the characteristics. Like, qubits, what the hell's a qubit? If I don't know, like, you're not really summarizing or making it easy to understand. And quantum mechanics principles is also kind of a vague term. This one's telling me exactly what it can do. And then it's telling me that it has vast potential, which is good, but there's some balance here. Practical construction is still a challenge. I like that one. I think that's going to be the right answer. We'll find out. All right. Yuri Garrigan's contributions to space exploration. By the way, you notice how I didn't even look at the notes here? I'm really just trying to focus on the answers when it comes to these questions. Note-taking questions, just get in there, like look at the notes and really try to do as much elimination there as you can because you can usually answer without looking over here. Um all right, so Yuri Garrigan became the first person journey. That's cool. That seems that seems a good thing. That's a contribution, but that's more of a personal thing. I don't know if it necessarily is much of a contribution to... I mean, it is. It's a big deal. First person to journey into space. That's pretty freaking huge. Uh, lasted 108 minutes. I mean, that's also... That feels kind of like the same level of contribution as A, I, I, which almost makes me want to kill both of these. Successful 108 mission in under space. Set this. All right. See, this is now explaining a little bit more. Um, set the stage for further exploration. Earn the Soviet Union international recognition. That last bit is not exactly a space exploration contribution, but. All right. Short 108 minute journey. This is just, again, more about him. I think I think it has to be C because of this human space exploration thing, like that it helped other people do this, not just about himself and not just about the mission. This is the contribution. All right. The road not taken. The themes of this. This is a poem I'm familiar with. Robert Frost. Everybody should know this poem. This is like, it shows up a lot on SAT. Uh, choices and their consequences. Yeah, um, that's true. That is a, a generally how we understand it. Um, it's not about regret. I know this from the poem, but also just look at the way this answer is written. Describe the themes. Why would I start with Emily Davidson? Like, I don't think that makes sense. I want to focus on the themes. And so I don't like these ones that are starting with like Emily Davidson's analysis. If it was to like summarize Emily Davidson's analysis, then that would be a good answer, but it's not. Now, this one starts with the theme. So that seems like a good sign, too. Theme of choices and consequences is represented by two paths, suggesting the complexity. I think that's even better. I'm, I'm getting Emily Davidson out of here because <laughs> I think the themes here don't need to be that. And if I go to the notes to kind of confirm this, like theme of choices and consequences, that's there. Uh, and this explains that a little more, the two paths in the woods. Um, and... Complexity and ambiguity. I think that works. I think this this is probably the best choice. Okay. All right. Ooh. Okay. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'll be right back. I'm gonna I'm gonna just like grab some more coffee. I'll be back in one minute. I'm gonna answer some of your questions. We'll review this module, and then you can watch me suffer with math. Okay. So just just give me one second. All right. Be right back.
Okay. Let's take a look at these questions that I had here. And I'm just taking a look at your stuff in the chat here. So, uh, Graham, like, let me go back a little bit and take a look at some of your questions since I got a few minutes here to check this and then a few minutes for the, before the next module starts. Um, so let me see. I'm just going back a little bit to you guys talking about some blue book scores. Um, all right. Goal scores. I like you guys shooting for the 1400s and 1500s and stuff. Props to you guys. Listen, remember your test score is just one component. There's other things that matter, but I, I respect the desire to go further you know um okay so i'm looking at some other stuff how much you should expect of the real deal if you get 670 look if you're if you're getting like 676 80 in one of these like i would expect you to do similar on the sat the real thing if not maybe a little more like i feel like these are harder questions than the blue book ones uh in some cases not always but in some cases and and for me i mean I'm capable of making mistakes here. I would not be surprised if I have a mistake or two. Like, no matter how good you are at this stuff, there's always going to be a certain degree of variance. You know, if you take the test five times, your average will say a lot. If you take it one time, there's variance, you know. So I think that the key thing is to keep practicing. You know, keep taking tests. Keep looking at your performance and see what your averages are. Well, how many mistakes are you making on average? What questions are you making mistakes on? That's going to tell you a lot. Um, so yeah, D said unpredictable curve. Honestly, it is pretty predictable tech. It's, it's not unpredictable. The, the, I, I, there really isn't much of a curve. It's, it's just, you make mistakes, you lose points and you lose more because there's fewer questions. It's, it's not like the old SAT where you could have a couple of errors and still get a top score. All right. Shivam, thank you for the qubit explanation. I, I am familiar with qubits. I do know what they are, but Again, if I'm looking at a question that's asking me to summarize and balance and make it simpler, I'm probably not going to use that answer. We'll see if I was right. Um, how do I approach the poem ones? Uh, we had a couple in there. We can we can flick through those and take a look. Um, let me see if I can find one in here that we had. That was that was literature, war and peace. I don't know if we had another good poetry one in here. I think it was on the first module. Maybe we, maybe we could find that. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, but poetry, man, you got to like, you got to look at what the question is asking for. If it's like main idea structure, um, that's, that's sort of one thing to focus on first. What is the question asking about? Like structure, I'm going to look for like different sections to try to break it into pieces and understand how it's being organized. If it's asking about main idea, I'm going to focus more on like what words and ideas I see the most sort of imagine counting points in your head. Like, oh, I see this four or five times. It must be the main idea. Um, and then also like, I think with poetry specifically, main idea is often the message. Is there a message or a lesson or like a moral or a conclusion? Because a lot of times you'll get that at the end of a poem. Uh, so that's something to look at. Um, grammar and punctuation stuff. So Tashi asked about grammar. How do I remember all the rules? One tip is to be an English teacher for a decade because that'll make you good. Um, that's what I did. But you probably don't have that kind of time. My uh, suggestion for you would be like read as much as you can. When you read in English all the time, you expose yourself to good grammar. And also for uh, the question about punctuation from Ayman, same thing, man. Like if you read in English all the time, you will know what good grammar looks like. You, you won't even necessarily have to know the rules. You'll just sort of have an instinct that says that feels wrong. That can't be the right answer. I've never seen that before. And that'll help you. Like that'll trick, like you, when you have a good instinct because you read a lot, it's easy to answer grammar and punctuation. I have read a lot. I got a full bookshelf. I've been a literature teacher. Like that's how I know. I don't have to remember the rule. I can tell you the rule because I've learned the rule because I had to teach the rules, but I don't need to remember the rule. I can tell you if something looks good or bad in a second because I've constantly read. I've constantly trained my brain. Okay. Um, I got, I want to just take a look at six because this was the one that I was a little stuck with before I move on and take some break time and answer more questions. Ah, dissatisfaction is there. Definitely by the, like the idea of being stifled and longing for something that's there. Limited role doll in this house. That's there. 
per yearning for independence. That's there hard personal achievement. That's also there. Like I think the question then becomes, should I focus on how she feels about her surroundings or how she feels for herself? And I think it's this now that I'm looking at this, like this is why it's good to come back. By the way, I'm, I'm seeing this fresh. I'm seeing this again, like a full reset. I, I probably focused on different things. If you go back and watch me do this question, I don't know. It probably is very different. Um, but looking at this now I'm, I'm looking at the stuff that she's talking about. She longs for that's a yearning. Yes. There's things about the environment, but they're not as concrete as these things that she says about herself. So I'm going to go with D I'm going to take that choice. We'll find out if it's right. Okay. So I'm going to send this module. Um, no time's not running slow, brother. I'm, I'm just efficient. Or maybe there's some weird lag. Okay. I'm just taking a look at uh, other stuff you got here. Let me see. Um, Okay, so you guys talking about a little bit about Blue Book. Um, everybody who asks, hey, I got this score. Is this score possible? Anything's possible. It's possible that you answer everything right by blind luck. You could blindfold yourself and mark every answer, and you might get them all right. It's possible. A monkey could get 1,600. It's possible. Okay? Anything's possible. Don't ask if it's possible. Ask, what do I need to do to do it? Okay? Everything's possible. It's it's a question. Oh, this just went by itself. <laughs> uh, I thought I had more time on that break. All right. En enjoy me doing math. Um, yeah. So, Sarina, conventions of standard English is grammar, punctuation. That's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, so, you need to know those things. That's, that's the majority of those questions. They're just grammar or punctuation questions. All right. <laughs> um. But what you need to do to improve everybody is like, okay, look at your mistakes, make a list. Okay. Like literally get a piece of paper and write down, okay, how many mistakes did I make on vocabulary? How many did I make on punctuation? How many did I make on grammar? Classify your mistakes, determine what you are doing wrong. Exactly what, because that's how you're going to get better. And I might, one thing I would even encourage you to do, do what I'm doing right now. Maybe go ahead and like record yourself taking a test. Think out loud, like try to do it honestly, but like record yourself and look at maybe review the tape. That could be an interesting approach. What were you doing on that wrong answer? What were you looking at that you shouldn't have looked at? Did you get lost? Did you look at the wrong thing? Did you misinterpret the question? Like maybe recording yourself could be a good way for you to improve. I've never suggested that before. I just thought of that now. All right. So this is going to be rough. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. All right. So, but I can, I can kind of figure this out. So, uh, so if Z equals seven, then that's 35 minus 20, uh, 15. So it's 20. Okay. I can do, I can do that one. All right. We're looking good. Uh, data set A and B, which compares the, the range, uh, the range is greater in B, right? Cause it's one twelve. That's the range. So that is true. It is less. That is okay. All right isosceles triangles. Ooh, okay. Hang on. Did just go to Z? Okay. Y, Y. Hang on. I might, I might actually need to like draw this for a second. <laughs> I'm so bad. Um, hang on. But I remember triangles. I should be able to do this. Why doesn't my pen work? Oh no. I'm starting to feel the panic that you guys do right now. Honestly, it's, it's pretty funny. Um, all right. So if I have X and Y. All right. If the angel, if the X is 50, what's B? All right. Hang on. So W corresponds to Z. And then you're telling me the base ones are X and Y. Okay. So W is at the top in my head, X and Y at the bottom. X is 50. So Y should be 50. And that means W would be 80, right? And then if W is 80, then then B is also 50, right? And then it just has to be 50. Yeah, it has to be the same. Okay. All right. I'm slow. You're, you're going <laughs> to. Um, Babu, you're saying it's similar, just different numbers, same pattern type questions. I mean, yeah, that's, that's most math tests, man. There, there's only so many ways you can write math problems. <coughs> um, book suggestions, Jam, uh, whatever you like. Read whatever you want. Uh, fictional literature is often a good choice. Maybe some modern literature. I like Cormac McCarthy. I like John Gardner. 
Um, he's not as modern, but I like him. I like Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, cars refilled with 12 gallons. All right. There's seven gallons. Okay. So, all right. He used five gallons to go 120 miles. So that would be the dividing. Yeah. 24, right? That makes sense. 24 miles a gallon. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ooh, this is complicated. There's two things now. All right. So <laughs> what is the value of three X plus Y? Well, I mean, why you, I, I think I know how to do this. I'm actually, all right, hang on. Let me see if I can like give this a legitimate attempt on my paper here. Um, so hang on, hang on. I want to, I want to try this, right? I think I know how to do this. Uh, it's been so long since I've tried to do something like this. This is going to be rough. All right. But I think the, the move is that you're supposed to like solve for y on one side or something like that and then like so i would do this for example and then yeah so like that is that and then i would i think that would work i don't know if that's the best way to do this i could be doing this i think i might want to try this a different way for division reasons um but if that is that <laughs> this is going to be this is going to be kind of painful for you guys uh so just keep that in mind um so yeah i'm getting stuck already <laughs> i don't remember how to do this at all this is rough. Um, but you know, like this could be this. <laughs> Sorry. It's rough. I, I really can't. The last time I took a math test was in college and I, my teacher basically passed me out of mercy, out of like sheer pity for me. Um, 280 grams of sugar for dessert. Okay. X is small. Okay. Hang on. So this might be doable. Um, so yeah, you've got double one number for the big boys. So essentially you can reduce all that because it's just double. And then how many more grams of sugar does each large size dessert use than each small size dessert? So it's basically, whoa. Okay. Oh, this is giving me the instructions on how to do it. I thought I had to like read this for a second. Uh, I never do math as you can tell. Um, so Yeah. How many more grams of sugar? Uh, would it be, hang on. I, mean, I think I, I think I can just do this in my brain. It's five, right? Because if this is 10 and this is 15, then I would get it, I think. I think, right? Let me, like, I think I'm testing this in my head. I think it works. I, I want to check though, because uh, I could be wrong. Um, no, that would be too much. That would be too much. So maybe it's less. Uh, yeah. Oh man, I don't know. Three. Let's try that. <laughs> it's eight. You're telling me it's eight? Wait, this last one? No, this is eight. Wait, eight more grams? Oh, maybe it is. Wait, wait, that could make sense. There's eights in there. Four is an eight. I don't know. It would be twelve. Maybe? Um, yeah. And then, oh, I think you might be onto something. All right, we'll find out. I'm bad. Uh, square A, a side length of nine centimeters. Perimeter is four times the perimeter of square A. Okay, hang on. So if that's nine and the perimeter is four, they're squares, so it's gotta be just four times as much, right? I mean, if, if the perimeter is four times as much, then that just means we multiply all the sides by four, and so we would get this, right? Yeah, that checks out. Uh, okay, I know squares. I remember shapes. I was good in geometry for class for a minute. Um, number of seats after special days of promotion. How many seats are initially available before the promotion starts? Uh, wouldn't it be this 150 that's just sitting there, right? Because that even if you had zero, that would be 150, right? Or is it more than that? Available before days of a special promotion. Yeah. I feel like that's then that would be before the promotion, right? You had like the 150 that you already reserved for something else. Uh, 
Okay, if that is 210, what is the positive value of x minus two? Um, I mean, hang on, this is weird. I don't know why there's bars on the thing. I don't know what the bars do. <laughs> I feel like I should know what those are and what they do, and I don't. Uh, and then I, I'm thinking no. Um, hang on, where's my calculator? Where's the calculator when I need one? Hang on. Uh, I mean, I don't know, 64. Let's try that. I don't know if that's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Use Desmos? I haven't tried that thing either. Um, I haven't played with this, honestly, because I don't know what I'm doing. But it's pretty cool that there's like a graph and stuff. That looks neat. I can zoom in on it. That's fun. Uh, yeah. I don't know what to tell this thing to do even half the time. Um, okay. Which correct equation correctly expresses Q in the other terms? Okay. So then Q... I would want to just isolate that over there. So I, I would divide by that, right? And then put it over there. And then this is um, <laughs> yeah, beats me. Uh, but it looks like things move around and then there'd be a bunch of numbers. Um, I, I'm thinking, We'll, we'll go here. I feel like something needs to be divided. We'll, we'll go here. Uh, okay, four values of x that correspond to a linear relationship. Okay, there's a linear relationship value of h2. So if h, x, so I'm looking for the two here, right? Like this would be what's changing here. Yeah, it's going up by... Okay, it's a question of AX plus 16, where A is a constant, right? So I need to figure out, I basically gotta figure out the relationship between these numbers, right? And when, like how they're changing and they're going up by 32 every time. So I would just say then this, if it's two, right? Then it would be like 32 less, right? That seems like it makes sense. So it would be 16, which is the base here, cause that makes sense. I would think, uh, sure. We'll see if that makes sense. We'll see if that's right. Um, <laughs> all right, you can plug in equations in there. All right, cool. Uh, the given expression, the P, Q, and R constants, what's the value of P and Q? Holy crap, man, I don't know. Dude, like that's a lot of, there's like so many letters and numbers there. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, X finds the solution to the system of inequalities. All right, which could be the value of X so I need the Y would be a five, right? And that's gotta be less than this number, which if it were zero, yeah, it can't be that. It's gotta be more than that, right? So it would have to be a bigger number, I think. Uh, Cause if it was this, that would work, I think. We'll find out. Um, okay, lines of good. I'm going to also check on my time, make sure I don't run over time today because I got some stuff to do after. I may skip the second module, guys, because it's going to be rough. I might I might just jump through some of these a little faster. Uh, okay, every two hours it decreases by 15%. I, that I can do. That's like, that's like financial math almost. So, um, yeah, so it would be 100,000 times uh, 0.5 times 4, like to the fourth basically is, is what you're going to do. Um, yeah, so I think I got this figured out. I think I got it figured out. So it should be going down to about here, right? Yeah, that seems, a no, it might be more than that actually. It's four hours, no, it's, I was just thinking about two. No, it's four, it should be more. Uh, it should be, you know, processing rate decreases. So 
right? I mean, but wait, would it be going the other way? Wait, because it decreases if it if the rate decreases. Wouldn't I mean? Wouldn't I want the rate to increase? The the lines of like I would want more code per hour. I, I'm gonna go with this. I think this is right. Um, okay, cool. That's a thing. Uh, function oh, the plant species. Yeah. All right. What's the best interpretation of that? Uh, from F10 to zero. Okay. The the like we're going from here to here. Basically, we're saying that it went from like two to eight. Like uh. I mean, at the beginning was two, that checks out. I mean, but then it would be like, wouldn't it be a more focused on that increase or something? Uh, the six, yeah, I think this first one makes sense. All right, uh, yeah, that's too many symbols and weird things. I don't know what to do with that one. Uh, <laughs> conference increased by 20%. Second day's attendance is R times, then R plus it's 1.2 because it increased by 20. Okay, I can do that one. All right, infinitely many solutions. I mean, sure. Uh, I don't know how to do infinity. First term of sequence is seven. You guys can see why I became an English teacher, right? Like at this point, I think you can appreciate this. Um, first term is seven, each one six times the previous. Okay, so yeah, so every time I move forward, I go six times forward, right? And then I would wanna do I think it's this, right? Or it'd be N minus one because of the first one, right? Or no, I don't know that I would need that because of the first term is seven and I, and then six times and then each time I would go up. Yeah, I think that seems right. I don't know if that's right, but it feels right. All right, this is three less than something else. Uh, three less than 10 times something else. Z is 10 less than three times another number. 10 less than three times another number. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The minimum value. So it has to be, or would it be greater than and equal to? Because if it's the minimum value, I don't know if that's right, but I think that made sense. Uh, all right. Hang on. Triangles. Oh, I, oh wait, never mind. I, I only tried to learn trigonometry for like one second by myself and I have no idea how to do that anymore. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, I think I'm going to just call this math test, guys. This is the end of the module. I'm bad, as you can see. Uh, this is this is about where my math skills are. So if, if that makes you feel a little better about yourself, I, I'm sure there's probably some more questions that I could do in here, but I want to skip to the review and look at the English with you while I still have time because I got a meeting in, in like 30 minutes that I got to go to. So I want to make sure I can uh, take this out. Ooh, 690. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at these. I want to see what I got here. I'm surprised. I thought I was expecting more, to be honest. Um, weak areas in math. It should just say, stop trying. Uh, but let's take a look at our review for our English. I want to see what I got here. I'm kind of curious what the mistakes are. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Hang on. Big coffee pool. Oh, I got a few errors here. Okay. All right. Let's 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 hit the show answer option. Let's take a look at these. Okay. I was between forged. I was between forged and escalated. I don't know if I totally agree with this because it was like escalated it. I guess I feel like it didn't quite fit revolutionized. I feel I, I kind of made a gut choice here between these two. So, all right, fair enough. Six. Okay. So. I don't know if I agree with that answer because poem introduces a natural scene and then offers alternative explanations. Like again, it's not really, I mean, it is a natural scene. I guess, you know what? I see the reasoning now. Let me explain my error here because the first line of this is more accurate. The poem introduces a natural scene. It does. The first two sentences are just a natural scene. And then it gives alternative explanations the boy swinging them or the ice storms. That actually is a better answer. I, I think I overlooked that when I, I, I got focused on the idea of the observed phenomena that like he saw one thing and then wanted to explain it in different ways. But I, I kind of got lost by focusing on the boy swinging them. So I, I messed this one up. That's a genuine mistake. And I, I was thinking about that one. So that was a good question. Got me to got to do this. Um, all right. So this one, 
I think would need to be changed. I Because to me, I can't justify the migratory patterns thing because it's not in there necessarily. I see this might be a little bit of an error that needs to be fixed. I'm going to let them know. Because to me, if you're talking about vocalizations and recording devices, it needs to be about communication. That's just an obvious choice. So I disagree with that one. All right. This one was tricky to me. Um, I think that these two things were kind of similar. Um, I think that I, I focused a little more on the role as a covert protest of the time. But then I think that what we might be looking at here is like the role of it in promoting the nationalism, maybe more now. So I feel like this summarizes that previous point and maybe the national anthem thing is... I guess that's important for the idea of promoting because an anthem is partially there to promote that patriotism or that nationalism. So I could see where maybe I focused on the wrong thing here. I was looking more at its role in that time and maybe not as much of how it promotes it as an anthem. So fair enough. Okay. Um, let's see here. Yeah. No, yeah, you're not the only ones that thought these were hard. Like, I thought they were hard, too. And I honestly don't mind having hard stuff to work on. Like, it's challenging. And I can admit when I screw up. Like, I can admit when I take the wrong direction. It's easy to do that on the SAT. It's easy to, like, you know, get focused on one thing and forget about other things. And maybe sometimes you need to weigh those more. Like, what I did here, I, I was focusing a little bit more on its role in that time of the past. But maybe I should have focused more on its present usage and it's like current situation because it wasn't asking me so much about history maybe i just misinterpreted that a little bit um i know i was torn between these two and i think that's another subjective situation where it depends on how i interpreted the question because like the functional significance this was b was the function technically like how it what it you know Duh, like it, I guess the survival part was good. I should have probably chosen that one. Actually. I think I changed this one because, okay. I like the C one that I marked is it's specific functions. Right. But I didn't really think about like what that was for so much. I, I think I got mixed up on this one. I should have chosen B. I, I was leaning towards B and I didn't trust my instinct. Okay. Module module two. What do we got? Okay. Yeah, I I guess this is also a good answer. I was also between these two choices of reciprocal and tenuous. I feel like the exacerbating social inequalities led me more towards tenuous. At the same time, I think that reciprocal made sense because the relationship itself is kind of reciprocal. If you have more wealth, you have more resources. If you have more resources, that probably means you have more wealth. Um, but the tenuous part is the society part too. Like it's tenuous in our society that we have billionaires like Jeff Bezos and we have a bunch of poor people. So maybe I was thinking more about that aspect in society and social inequities versus the specific relationship between the two things. Like I could see where I made a mistake there. Uh, here we go. I shouldn't, I changed my answer. Shouldn't change my answer. Should have trusted my my instinct here from the beginning. I mean, this is to depict that, right? I I think that both of these answers are really close and it is a little bit subjective here. But if I want to say, okay, to the purpose of the text to depict this, I mean, she does start by talking about the environment. So her environment being stifling, like she does start with that. And if I apply my typical logic in a paragraph of like focusing on what they say first, probably should have put that more, you know, I think that the, the things I, I chose to focus on other things. And again, those, some of that's like just my brain. You know, like I personally am an individual who loves independence and personal achievement. Naturally, I probably gravitate towards D, you know, but maybe more objectively, A is the right answer. Like I can see it, you know, uh, what was wrong with 13? All right. Hang on. Cause I thought I had this one on, on like totally locked down. Uh, 
Engine A's lowest compression ratio is higher. See, okay. I argued against that. I'm going to tell them about that. I disagree with that. I don't think that would be the right answer. How can I argue that? Like, let me get a like piece of paper and put it right there. I don't like, no, they're all, they're the exact same. Like I, I'm literally using a ruler basically. I, I disagree. Um, I don't think I can convince like convincingly say that. So I'm going to let them know about that. I think that was one that needs to be fixed. Um, hang on. For instance, with a colon, I don't know about that. Take Bartlett pairs, for instance. I mean, actually, upon further review, I mess I messed this one up. I went too fast on this one. Um, I think I got distracted talking to you guys because I spent. There's no way I actually spent two minutes and twenty six seconds on this question. So you know what it is here, people. Um, it's it's because the the next clause starts like this like unless they're treated with exactly right but this is a big like sentence basically that is being added after and i can see the value in using a colon there like because the first clause is short and direct so often when i have like a short clause it kind of makes sense to do the colon and in this case maybe for instance would have been better used if i said like you know for instance, if Bart if Bartlett pairs are not treated with the exact right amount, like that would be better. I think I went too fast on this and actually B probably is a better choice. Okay. All right. So fair enough. And that was the only ones. All right, not too bad. Um yeah, let me take a look at some of the other stuff here to see if there's any questions that you guys might have. Um, if you do have any questions, holler at me, let me know. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I could have divided the second equation by three. Yeah, see, you all know how like to answer these questions in math, and I just am so like at no level whatsoever. I had the idea of maybe doing like, uh, you know, some kind of like series where I try to learn math. <laughs> but I honestly just don't have time to do that right now. That's something I would have to do in like March or April when my life is a little more relaxed. Um, but it's been fun having you join me anyway. Um, and just to, to briefly wrap this up today, um, so to talk a little bit about this stuff and what I'm doing here with SAT Crash Course, like, again, um, they reached out to me and showed me this stuff. I looked at it. I liked it a lot. I feel like this is really good practice material. Is it perfect? No. Okay. Is college board perfect? Also no. And they have a billion dollars in the bank. So I am willing to like give a little bit of flexibility to people make, I mean, my material's not perfect. If you look at my stuff, I've got some things that are probably not perfect. I had to make, you know, hundreds of questions in three months or less to try to have a program to, so I could teach people this year. Uh, and, and I feel like what these guys have going on here is quality stuff. It, for the most part, there are some things that I want to improve and I'm working with them on that. I've actually, I can show you, um, right here. Hang on. Like I have all their practice tests in here because I'm doing review of, of their questions. So, uh, I'm going through and leaving notes on things that I think they could improve. Cause I want to make sure that if you're using this material, it's as good as it can possibly be for you. And for me, like if I want to work with a brand or work with anybody on this channel, I want it to be more of a collaboration and less of just like a blind support kind of thing. So, um, for me, like the sponsorship deals, like there's no money up front. They didn't pay me to like do this. They said, if people buy it using the code score, you'll get something back. They get a discount. Everybody wins. Cool. But I all, I honestly saw the value in these tests to the point where I want them for my own students. So the people that are in like the score classes, if you watched the live stream classes, the people that were like in that Zoom, uh, we're giving them access to these tests through the SAT crash course. So they're also helping me with my program. And that's how much I value this content. Like for me, this is good enough for me to use in my classes and good enough for me to give to my students for extra practice. And so I'm grateful that they're willing to like collaborate in that way. So that's really the main thing I asked for. I said, just help me help other people. If I can help you guys make your tests better, great. If you can help me make my class better, great. 
Like that's what it's about for me. So, you know, I wanted to show this with you to be transparent. I want you to see what you're looking at. If you're deciding, if you're thinking about like buying a test on here, I want you to know what you're going to get. And I want you to know that I'm trying to help it be better. Okay. So, so that's just something, you know, I, I want you to understand that a little bit. Um, so the free course where I provide the PDFs, check that out. Um, and, and I could give you like a quick, uh, hang on. I could give you a little quick pre like show of my content so you can kind of see what to look for. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And thank you for checking it out, by the way. Like it means a lot to me. And, and if you've been here for a while, all the more so, like, I love you guys. It's, it's a lot of fun working with you all. Um, but like, just to show you, I did two classes from one class that I did. These were like the first two that I published these guys here, these free digital SAT class ones. Um, but those were like two random classes from one of my regular series of classes. This is actually a full start to finish program that I do for English. So like from here, from this class number one, all the way to class number seven is like everything that I teach in a class. And that is what I would recommend you check out because this is better content, honestly. Like when I did these first two, it was kind of new for me. It was like the first time I was going through digital SAT. And I can tell you as a teacher, like when you first teach something, you are never at your best. Okay. You're never the best teacher you could be. I usually get good at like the third attempt. Like the third one is the best one. This May series was the second one. And I think it came out really well because I knew I was going to stream every one. So that pushed me to make sure it was like, really good, you know? Um, so if you want to check out that stuff, if you want like full prep, like that's what I would suggest. I use exercises from my materials. The link is in the description of those videos. And, you know, I go through it with students and, and yeah, there's like some, some dead spaces in the videos. Cause I'm waiting for them to resolve questions or, you know, reviewing their work. But like, that's the class. That's the thing I would recommend for you to check out. If you want like more, you know, support, uh, before you take your test and stuff and then check out those, uh, you know, check out those videos that I made about like, you know, all the different question types, like that stuff is useful too. Cause if you have like, you know, if you have specific issues, it might be good for you to look at how I address specific kinds of questions. So like punctuation, sentence function, I can't cover every single thing in one of these videos, but like it gives you a good idea of maybe what you should do differently when you address these questions. Cause for me, I think the number one strategy for digital SAT is to be efficient by looking at the question and figuring out what you need to read. If you look at what I did today, um, and I'll, I'll be honest, I did things a little faster today than I probably would. in if I, if I was really paying for a test, I would try to, I would make a little more effort. Right. But like I was trying to show you how I naturally do it. And for me, like I have different strategies depending on the question. And sometimes I have to identify when to change my strategy and like adapt to the kind of question or the kind of paragraph. So there are like different approaches to different questions. And what's probably best for you is again, look at your work, look at what you need to improve specifically, and then try to figure out the best strategies for you for those types of questions and then practice those. Um, and everybody's different. Try to experiment a little bit, figure out what works for you. You, I can give one method or one piece of advice and it may work for a lot of people, but it may also be horrible for other people. And, and that's honestly how things work in education. Everybody's different. You've got to also take the lead on your own development. Nobody knows you better than you. So Think about how you operate. Think about how you do things. How can you maybe optimize your approach? If there's a method that's working for you, use it, okay? There's not necessarily a right way to solve these problems. It's, it's about you doing what works best for you. But try different approaches too. Maybe, maybe if you're struggling with a certain type of question, it's because of your approach. Maybe it's something you could do differently, you know? So some thoughts on that. Um, Aditya, you got... 1490 is that good hell yeah man guys anything over like 1400 is good 
Okay, anything over like 1300 is good. It's it's all relative, really. Um, it really depends on individuals. I have people that get 1250, and that's a good score for them. And that is going to be more than sufficient to help them get into the universities that they want. Okay, what's good depends on your level and where you want to apply and how much they care about the SAT. So if you're applying to MIT, 1490 is not that good. I'll be honest, okay? But then again, why are you applying to MIT when there's like so many other places that could accept you and you don't need necessarily to be an MIT and okay, or go ahead and apply, but then make sure you have some other options because your chance, even if you have 1600, your chances of getting into MIT are like 1%. So don't put all of your energy into things that are like very unlikely to work out. You need to balance your list. I guarantee you, if you are somebody who could be admitted to MIT, you're also somebody who could easily get a full ride scholarship from Illinois Tech. And you might say, well, I want MIT. Illinois Tech is a great school. If you get a full ride scholarship from them, you're going to be just fine in life. Okay. So keep that in mind. Like you need to make sure you're applying to more universities that are more viable for you and ones that can cover your financial situation and ones that match well with your profile. And I can tell you now that like, you know, your SAT is not going to guarantee you admission anywhere. It's just one factor. So don't give it too much importance in your life either. It's not, it's not everything. It's good to do. I always recommend doing it, but it's not the most important thing for you. Um, you guys, you guys will be fine. Like really, um, anyway, thank you so much for being here. It's been a lot of fun. I've got some more live streams that I'm planning on doing. I haven't yet scheduled them and I will make a little poster video to like, let you know about that. But I want to do some supplemental essays to kind of talk about how we can write some of those. So if you've got any like supplementals you want me to show you or want me to write with you guys, let me know. It'd be fun. Um, last year I did some for like Purdue honors college. I think I did, uh, you Chicago last year. That was fun. Uh, cause there are questions that are always interesting, but I was thinking of doing more like Ivy league ones this year and just like a couple other supplementals that maybe people submit or ask for. So if you've got anything you're interested in holler, uh, Santosh universities that have full ride scholarships. I've actually made a couple of videos about full ride scholarships. I did one that was like a full ride scholarship guide video. I can link that to you guys right now if you want, um, where I talk about like what you need to do and it's. I go into like, first of all, what universities can do that. And I do mention them quickly in the video. Like the, the idea is more for you to understand the general approach to that. But if you want to check that out, that video is in here. Uh, very few people watched it. <laughs> so, um, and, and I would also encourage you if you're interested in that to look at the video that I made with Claudia and Alba, who are two of the students that we helped in score to get into Columbia with a full ride scholarship, because I feel like, you know, it's hard to put into words what you need to do to get those kinds of scholarships. But I think it's easier to look at who you need to be. Like what kind of person do you need to be? Cause I can tell you right now, it's, it's a lot more about who you are than what you have done. What you have done matters a lot, but who you are, matters a lot too. If you are like these girls, if you are more humble and like, I think very down to earth, your chances are better. If you're trying to impress, if you're trying to show off, if you're trying to convince, it's not as attractive to these universities. I think the the type of people that these universities love the most are the people that don't actually need to be there like people that would be successful anywhere because they have the right attitude and the right mentality. And, and that's hard to do. That's not academic. That's personal. Um, but yeah, humbleness, man, humility is a big thing. I, and there's the link to that video. Claudia and I worked together a lot. She was one of the first cases in score. And like, I have a few minutes so I can tell you the story. Claudia the one thing she always said was like, I know they're going to reject me and that's okay. I'm fine with it. Like I will look at other options. If I have to stay in Peru, I have to stay in Peru. 
I want to try, but I understand if they don't accept me. Like that was always her attitude. I never heard her say, I deserve to be here. They should admit me. I'm overqualified. I'm definitely better than other applicants. I never heard her compare herself to anyone else. I never heard her like, you know, get negative towards other people who had success getting into those colleges. She wasn't like depressed because she saw people getting in and she wasn't. She was like, good for them. She was happy for them. That right there says a lot about someone, you know? And then I think the other thing is maturity. Maturity is important. Um, maturity means you can be independent. Maturity means that you know who you are and you are comfortable being who you are. And I know that's difficult for a lot of young people. Hell, it's difficult for adults. Uh, I think a lot of us struggle to be ourselves. Sometimes we don't even know who we are. That is important for these universities. They can't be, this is not a, like these top schools are not a place to find yourself. Okay. That's what the big public university is for that gives you in-state tuition and you can spend six years there thinking about life. Like the top colleges want someone who knows who they are, what they want, and knows how to get it and can and has the ability to go get it and could go get it regardless of whether they're in Harvard or Columbia or a local public university. Like that is the kind of person that they want to take over there and give a big scholarship to. And so that's what I see in Claudia and Alba. Like when I, when I talked to Alba as well, like Alba was like in her second year of business, she was immediately like, I, I, I will never forget my first call with Alba. Her and her mom were on the couch in their house. And it was like the initial consultation. And at that time in score, I didn't handle all the initial consultations, but I usually would like come in on them with my business partner, Pili. And we went into that meeting and, and right away, I was like, this person has maturity beyond what I normally see. It was evident. It was, there was a calmness. There was a collected person who was just like, I'm ready to listen. I also want to share some of my ideas. Like it was a nice adult professional conversation with a girl who was like 16 at the time. And I remember just finishing that call and telling Pili, I was like, Pili, this girl's got something, you know? Like you can feel that maturity. You can feel that like wisdom almost that she had. And she, cause like, look, when I compare to the other people I talk to, I get people who are like, you know, I want to go to MIT and they don't even have like perfect grades. And they come from a Peruvian system with 11 years of education. It's like, you have no idea what you're getting into. You won't get in. I hate to say it, but you won't because MIT doesn't admit Peruvians. Your program doesn't give you advanced calculus. You don't even have great grades. And like, if you're an intelligent, mature person, you should have already gone on Google and gone and looked at the profile and realized, I don't have what it takes. That is self-awareness. And that's another important thing. And I think a lot of people are not self-aware. They don't realize how competitive the situation is. They don't realize that they aren't really that competitive compared to other applicants. They assume they are because maybe they're the best in their school. They're the best in their class, but they got to look at the bigger picture. And like I talked to Alba and it was immediately clear when she mentioned, I would like to apply to this university. I would love to go to Columbia, but like, I know it's super hard and I know I probably won't get in. And that was the reason she reached out to us not to get into Columbia. She reached out to us because she wanted help finding other universities because she knew Columbia was going to be almost impossible for her. And she got in. She got in. Like, think about what that means. So someone who really understands their situation and really understands what they're getting into and has that like realistic, grounded approach is the kind of person that gets into these places. So think about how you can do that in your life. Think about how you can be a little bit more realistic, a little bit more like centered. Understand too that like where you go to college will not determine success in life. There are people who have been successful who did not go to top schools. If you look at the Forbes 500, most of the CEOs went to public universities in the United States. They did not go to MIT or Harvard. 
Um, Central Michigan University, I think, has as many CEOs as like John Hopkins and Princeton, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I, I could find that and show it to you. Let me see if I can find that real quick because I actually bookmarked this page the other day because I thought it was really interesting. Um, this was, yeah, hang on. I'll, sh I'll show you this real fast. I think this is something really worth seeing. Like this was, okay, so yeah, obviously, yeah, there's a lot at Harvard, but like they're probably already rich and their dad bought them a company so they got to be CEO right away. But just go down a little bit. Like look at some of these plays. Like UT Austin has nine CEOs. Michigan State has eight. New York University has eight. Like literally going to Michigan State, you're, you're on the same level as New York in terms of chances of becoming a CEO of a company, which objectively is like the most successful position you can get in a company. So I know being CEO isn't everything, but look at what that means. Arizona State's got six. Brown has five. Supposedly the most notorious party school on the planet has more CEOs than Brown University. Like, in Fortune 500 companies, right? Which are like the biggest companies in America. So the point here is like, you ultimately determine a lot more of your success than the college that you go to. And so while I understand a lot of you need large financial aid, which you can only get a lot of times from top schools, there are other places that can help you. And you should try to search for more places and, and expand those options so that you're not just applying to your MITs and Harvards and stuff because there's other places out here that will do great things for you. And, and I think people overlook that. They, they don't consider that. And the kind of person that gets into Columbia and Pennsylvania and Stanford is also the kind of person who says, you know what, I can also apply to Central Michigan and everything will be okay. Okay, so keep that in mind. I know that this is a hard process for a lot of people and I know that it can be stressful. I know that we can feel a lot of pressure. Okay, guys, it's normal if you feel pressure. It's normal if you feel anxiety. We're going into a test in a couple of days. I know that that can also generate that pressure and anxiety, but just remember that like, ultimately you determine your success, not your college, not your SAT, you do, okay? Even in difficult circumstances, there are ways for you to get ahead. So don't ever think that like a rejection from a university or a low SAT score is the end for you. All right. You are more than a score. You're more than a diploma. Go be better. All right. I guarantee that regardless of where you end up, if you're the right kind of person, you're going to get ahead. So I don't know. That's what I would tell you. Um, last couple questions here about good scores. Again, Let's talk, guys. I, what I'm trying to say here is that like your score, it really depends. You can also apply optional at lots of places and it's totally fine. They genuinely want you to do that. Like you don't have to send your SAT score every single place. There's a lot of places that don't care. There's a lot of places that hate it. I've told this story before, but I'll say it real quick. When I was at my conference in Miami, they, the, there was a talk about diversity in the colleges because of the Supreme Court thing. And there were like 200 university representatives from different universities in that meeting. And the one that was speaking was from UCLA, which is test blind. And she said, if you want more diversity, you should get rid of the SAT, go test blind. Everyone erupted into applause. Everybody there really hates the SAT deep down. Okay. So while they can't get rid of it because their college requires them to take it or consider it if it's optional, they deep down don't care that much. So they will gladly look at other factors before they decide based on your SAT. Does a good SAT help? Yes. Is it going to be the thing that gets you in? No. Is it going to be the thing that gets you rejected? Probably not. Unless you have a really low score for the university, in which case apply test optional. Like you can do that. Okay. Um, so, oh, if there's no minimum. Okay. If you're doing a, all right, all right. Asterisk. Let's talk. Um, if you are applying to a school outside of the United States and they are asking for the SAT, then they probably do care more. Okay, I'll be honest. Like, if you're applying to a Bocconi in Italy or a you know top university in India or like maybe this place in Thailand, if they ask for the SAT, then they probably do care a good bit. I'll be honest, and and you should work on it because this this new trend of test optional and like not loving the SAT is a very American thing right now. 
And so I, I could see where that could be a problem, you know, if uh, you're looking at other countries. So yeah, I, I won't convince you otherwise. Um, but then again, like you say, the score might be a lower standard. Maybe, I don't know if you're, if that university has like any admissions people, but maybe you could ask them for some data. Like, do they have data on the class profile? Like, could you get average scores or something? Like ask them, reach out and ask what they, what they look for. Like a lot of times they might be able to tell you, you would be surprised what information you can get by just asking. Most admissions people like to help people. That's how they get into that job. So yeah. Ah, uh, student life, man. Ask about mine, my student life. Um, well, high school student was weird because I got taken out of high school because I had a very religious family who felt that my classmates were a bad influence. So I was homeschooled, actually. I, I taught myself, essentially, for the last couple of years. Um, and then I didn't go to college until I was a little older. I think it was like 25 when I started college, 24. And uh, I, I even made a little video about that in the airport in Spain one night. Um, but... It was weird because I did a hybrid program before the pandemic. It was a couple nights online and then weekends in person because I worked full time. So it was it was different. I wasn't living on campus. I didn't have like the traditional college experience, but it was what was good for me. And I liked my courses. There were only a couple of courses I really hated. Math, shocker, uh, ecology and defensa civil, which is like about like a disaster readiness, which is kind of useful for school work if you're going to study education, but also was like, this is dumb. Um, so yeah, it was weird. It was different, but it was good for me. It was what I went, what I needed. Um, 1250 and you want to improve in two days. I mean, two days is not a lot of time to learn and like concrete, concretify, like solidify your, um, your knowledge there. Like I wouldn't expect huge improvements in two days instead. And I wouldn't spend a ton of time studying in two days either. Again, do a little bit of practice, but make sure you get good rest. Don't cram all night. Don't like stay up late, get some sleep, have your breakfast, get comfortable in the morning. Make sure you check blue book. Everybody make sure you open up blue book. Make sure you've downloaded the test content. Make sure you've uh, gotten your admission ticket. Send that via email to your phone or print it out. Make sure you're good to go. Make sure you have all that stuff done today or tomorrow. Okay. A day before the test, you want to have all that stuff ready to go so that you can just be like Zen and relaxed and you don't have to worry about a thing. That's important for your success. Do not like you want to be organized. You want to get to the test center early so that you feel comfortable and confident. If you were, you know, rushing at the last minute to grab all your stuff and then you go to the test center and now you're stressed, like that's going to mess up your performance. Okay. So you need to be just calm and cool, right? Good to go. Organized, ready. It's like when I've had to take flights at 5 a.m., I got to leave the house at like three in the morning. I want to get a little bit of sleep before that, right? I got my bags packed. I got all my documents ready. Everything's good to go. All I got to do is grab the stuff and go. I don't want to think about anything else because I'm going to be tired or I'm going to be like distracted or worried about something else. So just anytime you got to do something like that, get prepared in advance, get organized. Okay. So uh, is it mandatory to print the admission ticket? No, it can't be on your phone. They, they say you can like email it to yourself, pull out your phone and show them what's up. So you don't have to print it necessarily. Um, but yeah, I, I, like general, if you're thinking of practicing all night today, I mean, yeah, you still got a day to rest. That's fine. Like go ahead and practice a bit. But again, like you want to make sure that you're not only, you know, academically prepared, but physically prepared. A test takes physical effort. You know, I, I kind of, last night I spent like a couple hours at my business partner's house talking about some stuff and over a bottle of wine. So I got up today at 6.30 in the morning so that I could get some coffee in my system, but I only slept like four or five hours. What was my score today? Like 690? That's probably why. Like, honestly, I usually get more. And when I've been doing the, the other practice tests, like the ones that I'm reviewing for uh, SAT crash course, I'm usually getting like 750, 770 at least. So today I had a lower score. Maybe it's because I was up until two in the morning drinking wine. Maybe <laughs> like, you know, taking care of yourself physically is important for your mental performance. So maybe go take a walk outside, get like some fresh air. Don't just sit in the house and like 
study all night. You need to, you need to move around a little bit, get that blood flow, make sure you're up. I mean, coffee and pills helped me today overcome, you know, a, a hangover. Am I an alcoholic? I don't think I'm a full blown alcoholic. I think I'm like functional maybe. <laughs> um, no, I, I typically don't drink too much. Um, but I, you know, and socially I do. Um, but yeah, it was one bottle of wine with a friend. That's not too much. A couple glasses of wine is pretty reasonable at night. I wasn't getting hammered either. Uh, it's a week. I got to work all day, but, um, you know, it's those things that you do, do affect yourself. If you don't eat and then you're hungry during the test, it's going to affect you. You need blood sugar. You need energy. Like there's things you got to do besides study. Okay. So something to think about. Um, Anything else in here? Deploy. Okay. They've added a round for the college. Well, then that's probably good for you. Let's talk. If, if you, if you see a decline in students applying and so they're adding another round, that's probably a good sign for you getting in because then they're a little more desperate and that's going to be a phenomenon going forward. Like the number of students that can go to college is diminishing because people are having less babies in the world. So there's going to be less students and more seats in, in the future. This year and next year is like the peak in the United States, but other countries are already seeing that happen. So you might also want to consider that there's going to be places where there are more seats than there are people to fill them. And that's where we can take advantage of some things. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, review and sleep general, I think, is a good idea. Get some sleep, you know, move around, make yourself comfortable. Um, all right. So I got to roll cause I got to start my other meeting in a couple minutes. I want to say thank you to everybody here for hanging out. It's been a lot of fun. I really love doing these streams with all of you. You're all great. Uh, it's, it's really cool. Um, and you know, for those who reach out and hit me up on WhatsApp and stuff, like I, I want you to know, I do appreciate your questions and things. I try to get to everybody. I do have a lot of work this month cause we are doing a lot of early applications. And so I got to take care of a lot of score people here too. But I always try to make some time for everybody here. So if I don't get back to you right away um, or, you know, I can't provide as much support as you're looking for, try to understand I make as much time for you as I can. I try to get back to people relatively quickly. Um, it helps me if you're if you leave questions and get get right to it so that as soon as I have a chance, I can just open it up, see the chat, answer your questions, you know. Um, so I want to try to you know help more people with this process, but I also have to prioritize the people here and score. But again, I really, I really appreciate you all being here, checking this out. I hope it's helpful for you. And uh, also just want to say thank you to SAT Crash Course. Again, if you guys do are interested in buying something from these guys, it's up to you. It's your choice. Um, but you could use the code SCORE to get a discount. And then that helps me out a little bit too. And uh, I'm continuing to try to help make these tests better for you guys so that they are indeed worth your time and money. I think that they are really good and I think that they have been really collaborative and I really like the way that they've worked with me. So uh, I can definitely say like these are good people with good intentions that are trying to help out. And that's one of the reasons I, I told them to make a free test and, and I said my people would like that and they did that. So I want to give a shout out to them because, you know, there's probably other companies or other brands that would have told me to F off and say, no, you don't tell me how to run my business. And these guys instead listened and said, okay, if you think a free test would help those people out, then let's do that. And and they were totally down to do that. So I really appreciate that about the guys over at SAT Crash Course. Love you guys. And uh, thank you for working with me on this project. It's really cool. And uh, yeah, we're going to have more stuff coming out soon. Um, mostly for, again, I want to try to do some supplemental essay like writing sessions on the streams. So uh, as soon as I figure out when I can do those and which ones I want to do, I'm, I'll probably put a post up and ask you guys for some suggestions and then uh, we'll get to it and we'll, we'll work on some of those because I want to help you with supplementals, especially before November deadlines. So that's the plan. Anyway, thank you so much. Have a wonderful night or day or afternoon or whatever it is for you. And I will see you soon. All right. Good luck on your test on Saturday.